I got started on the boardwalk. I wasn't allowed to get pierced until I practically moved out of my house. And that's when I moved down to that town where the boardwalk was in Wildwood. And that's where I first got pierced. And I was like, yeah, I want to work here. I like the, it was such a fascination with myself. And I didn't even know other options of piercings. I only knew of ear piercings. That was it. And I tried uh, asking for a job for three years. And it was no, no, no. And then one year I actually uh, went up and asked for a job. And they just happened to fire someone that day. And that kind of was my window that worked out and for me i was like i finally got this job and uh they hired me just to sell t-shirts and stuff on the floor i hated that after the second day i was just miserable and i told them it's like yeah you want me to be a salesman shark kind of guy i really want to pierce that's why i asked for the job and they tried me out and uh, stuck with it ever since my apprenticeship was for about a year uh, a little under a year to be honest it was most of that summer uh, then in the off season, a lot of uh, reading, a lot of researching. At the time, I was trying to find any information I could. Uh, this was around 2005, 2006, so like BME was pretty big, but I never got into that. I didn't know it existed. So for myself, it was more or less just books and finding what I could on anything. And then uh, the following year is when I started. I got licensed in that spring to work for the summer. And it was like a month after I broke my arm. So I had to like relearn everything again that I kind of learned from that summer before. And it was a lot of, lot of rough edges, I say, trying to get into that. But it worked out. And then I got really good for the boardwalk, and, uh, which is not good. I really wanted to get into a city to make a bigger name and actually make this a career as a piercer on the boardwalk. I was told often, it's like, oh, it's good while you're young. But... When you get into your 30s, it's no one wants to go to an old piercer. And I didn't know anything about like higher end jewelry or anything like that. So I took that verbatim. So coming up to a city was super important for me. And that's why I moved here in 2008. After a lot of failed attempts at college, <laughs> um, I also tried uh, to get into the military. That wouldn't work. And I didn't know what I wanted to do. But the one thing that was consistent is that I was still always fascinated and into piercing still received piercings. I had a roommate that did piercings on the boardwalk at the time. And it was the one thing that always kind of worked. And I mean, ask anyone who's in this profession now, it, it's, you're never as a kid, very rarely, it's like, I want to be a piercer when I grow up, you know? I never had an answer for that question. I think I said Tim Allen once. Um, so for me, it was just the one thing that kind of worked. And after attempting all those other avenues, I realized that this is going to be a career that I'm gonna to have to do and work for myself despite the negative feedback I got from like parents and things like that. Like I said, you, it's, a, it's an unsure road. You don't know what's in store for you. It's a risk for most people when they go through an apprenticeship. It's like, this is gonna work or it's not gonna work. And I was very determined to make it work. One of the biggest issues I've had with working there was saying no to people. There were plenty of times where there was a piercing that I wasn't comfortable doing or something that someone might not have been suited for but unfortunately, given the saturation of work in that area, someone would do that piercing and, and make money from it. So the theory behind it was, well, they're going to get it done anyway. We might as well be the ones that do it, which part of that, you know, for me is that some things can just be right out unsafe for people. And I always kind of had that pressure of, oh, you have to do this or you're not going to get paid or you have to do this. And that is something I did not like. And getting away from that and having that ability to say no to certain individuals not like nothing personal it's more or less you know they might not be anatomically suited for it or just for development reasons it's a really bad idea um i remember i think i did a, a lip piercing on a 12 year old on the boardwalk once and i absolutely hated doing it didn't want to the parents were okay with it despite morally speaking it was a terrible idea and for myself once i got out of that situation as far as uh karma is concerned <laughs> if, if you're a believer in such things making up for all those things i was kind of had to do when i was there that's the one thing i really disagreed with what really benefited me with that transition moving up here was my boss was a, a tattooist and he wanted to have piercing work we've had he had other piercers in the past before me then they were i would say in the same level as i was back then where you know you just 
grab something, took a needle, make it work. Not really knowing the understanding of like proper placement, jewelry, things like that. It wasn't working out too well with him. He had piercers that were either not busy enough, um, so they would go off and do other other things and slack off at work. And uh, it was a mutual agreement. Was, you, you know, he says, I need a piercer. And I was like, I need to get to a city. So that was the deal. The fact of him not being familiar with piercing, I mean, he knew a little bit about it at the time, made it work for me because I can mold it into something that was, you know, safe and uh, professional, you know, something that was to be strived for and not fast, cheap, easy, sit down, there you go, thanks. I got your 20 bucks and this may or may not heal, probably won't kind of situation. That was the main focus for that for me is providing that environment. I didn't have that, you know, before. I did have some challenges at the time on the boardwalk. I was, I was one of the better piercers there. And for the, you know, in that time period, when I moved here, it was a complete big fish in a small pond scenario. I was moving up here with the idea of like, yeah, this is gonna be awesome. I'm gonna kick ass. And then I get here and meet some other piercers and it's like, Technicare, what's that? Literally, like, I didn't know anything. I was super stoked, and as soon as I get here, I was like, I'm a hack, this is terrible. Um, so that was the main main starting point for that. And with the jewelry we had, it was all externally threaded garbage. And finding better companies at first was, it, I was so used to such cheap standards, so it was very difficult to convince my boss, who was also used to cheap standards, to hey, let's up this a little bit. In time, you know, he totally, he's, he's awesome. I mean, he's one of my, my biggest supporters, you know, as far as my career in this industry. You know, we worked together for quite some time, but it was definitely a learning curve for both of us. You know, coming up here was practically where I would consider my actual career started because that's when I kept a, a more serious tone to it and keeping things in how I was used to would not have worked out. I was looking for a second job because I wasn't that busy, didn't really provide many options. It was just here, I'm the guy that does it at the end. Now it's come to a point where, you know, we, we've completely revamped it all and made it into a service that people can enjoy from the beginning. You know, it's with piercing, there's the three elements of, you know, there's the, the price and then there's the idea it's gonna hurt but the experience should make up for the both of those things. And that was more of the focus is making sure that it was a good experience for everybody.